All right, let's get talking about the cavernous sinus. And we discussed the cavernous sinus a little bit when we were in the cranial cavity and brain lab because we talked about the dural venous sinuses. And that's exactly what the cavernous sinus is. It's an example of one of those dural venous sinuses. But it's unique in a few ways, and one of the, the ways that it's unique is that it's fairly expansive. And let's kind of figure out um, where it is located on this particular image. Now, anytime that you see blue, particularly if you have dura still associated with it, because you need that dura because that's what's going to um, kind of house the blood in the dural venous sinus. If you see any blue in these areas, you know you're probably looking at a dural venous sinus. And so you have a transverse sinus here, um, probably a little bit of a straight sinus right here. But in terms of trying to locate the cavernous sinus um, in a donor that still has dura, you need to look any blue that you have between where the superior orbital fissures would be located and where the apices of that petrous portion or that pyramid portion of the temporal bone. Any of this blue kind of in this region is going to be part of the cavernous sinus. All right, so you'll have a cavernous sinus, a right cavernous sinus and a left cavernous sinus, so it is paired. They're gonna be on either side of the cella tersica where the pituitary gland is going to sit. So anything over here and anything over here that is going to be considered part of the cavernous sinus. Now, one of the reasons that we uh, spend a lot of time on the cavernous sinus and why we talk about it clinically uh, fairly often is the fact that there's a lot running through the cavernous sinus or very near to the cavernous sinus. And so what's happening on this particular image is it's a pretty similar view, but what is unique and different from the last image is that the dura has been removed, okay? So while we're not truly looking at the cavernous sinus anymore because we've moved the dural portion of it, we are looking at structures that are very closely associated with where the cavernous sinus is located. And so you can see um, the structures that we're about to talk about right here on this side. So let's kind of get our bearings once more in terms of where the cavernous sinus would have been located. So here, the superior orbital, orbital fissure would be here. Here is that apex of the petrous part. So this whole area, if you had put the dura back here, that could house um, that dural venous sinus of the cavernous sinus. Now, once you've removed it, now we can start looking at the structures that are going to run through the cavernous sinus. And you really have two that we want you to kind of to hone in on. And you're gonna have your internal carotid, so you can see it right here, and you can see that it's kind of running through, and then you'll see it kind of pop back out here. So this is this little portion right here. You have some nerves that are going over it, and then you see it again right here. So that's the internal carotid. You'll have your abducens as well, which is cranial nerve six. Abducens and the internal carotid artery truly run through the lumen of the, the cavernous sinus. So that's an, that's an important thing to note there. Now there are other structures that are going to be very closely associated. You have oculomotor. This right here is oculomotor. This is three. This is your trochlear, which is four. And then we get into the fun of the trigeminal nerve. And remember, the trigeminal nerve has three divisions. You can see, um, actually this, is, this image is really nice in terms of really being able to show how these three divisions are exiting the skull. And so your first one is gonna be V1 right here. V1 is going to exit through the superior orbital fissure. So it's going through the superior orbital fissure with its good friends over here, three and four. And you can see that they're all kind of heading up towards this region. So remember the superior orbital fissure, uh, you can't see very well in this particular view because it's, that fissure is being occluded by the lesser um, wing of the sphenoid. Next you have V2. V2 is the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. And you can see right about here where it is going to 
head out through the foramen rotundum, which is what the foramen rotundum, if you'd move the nerve, you would see that space or that foramen, um, that hole basically for this to move through. And then lastly, you have V3 right here. V3 is the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. This is the one that has both afferents and efferents uh, for those uh, muscles of mastication as well as um, a considerable sensory component as well. It is going to exit through the foramen ovale. So if you think about having your cavernous sinus all in this region right here, all of these nerves are going to have um, are going to be very closely associated with the cavernous sinus and if you think about having some type of thrombosis associated with the sinus that could greatly affect some of these structures that are so closely related. So the only way to see this particular view and to see these nerves and to see these nerves truly exiting through their foramens, uh, foramina, excuse me, are to, to actually peel off the dura from this region. Otherwise, if we go back to the previous image, you can see that I can't really see any of those structures that we were just showing. So in order to do so, you would have to peel the dura um, basically to the bone in order to be able to see these. All right, so that is the cavernous sinus and the nerves and vasculature very closely associated within the region of the middle cranial fossa. Thank you, and please always feel free to reach out to me with uh, any questions.